Hang on to your hats, ladies and gents. You're never going to believe what I've got underneath this tablecloth. Yes, that's right. I was lucky enough to find another Filco Predicta. Now, I don't mean to gloat. Yes, I really was lucky. Uh, we went to our favorite antique shop in the city. Not only do they have two floors worth of amazing stuff, but their prices are actually really reasonable. So I got this predicted debutante with uh, original stand at a very, very reasonable price. Uh, I guess you could call it a Christmas present because that's right around when I got it. Um, I don't know I want to bore you with going through all the details of this because I actually restored a, an identical predicted debutante not too long ago. Not only the same circuitry, but even the same cabinet color. But I wanted to give you a brief look at it. Uh, this was actually the bottom of the end model, but some people like it better because it's the most uh, sleek because it doesn't have the arms on the side. It is 17 inch metal cabinet, uh, more reliable CRT than the 21 inch, and I already know that this picture tube is good. I think it is the original, but it still has some life left. Uh, the front of it is just cloth. So that's one place they cut corners, channel tuner is also kind of plain compared to the other 17 inch models that had a cast metal channel selector does not have the UHF option just does not have the antenna and if you notice it's got this label on the side this is property of Telesound Inc Philadelphia PA I've seen that on several other predictors and I was told that's an indicator that this was one of the models that was sold off to motel chains to work with closed caption system. So that's why it has no antenna. They would have hooked it up to coax running throughout the motel. It's in very rather fine condition. The only problem I've seen is that there is a bit of a scratch in the cover. I'm hoping I can buff that out. Now I will turn it around and give you a peek inside. Here's a look at the back side. It did come with the original back. I've already removed it. It looks like it's had very little servicing done. Rather filthy. It's just the way I like to see it. Original and filthy, meaning that uh, nobody's monkeyed with it. Yeah, I don't see a whole, really any indication other than the tube, tubes having been swapped out. Cap looks a little loose. Well, the seller didn't know anything about whether or not it worked. It didn't come with a power cord. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I don't recommend this. I'm a professional. I know what I'm doing. Well, at least a, a dedicated amateur anyways. Uh, I am going to try to power this up. I'm going to use a PR57, which has both a circuit breaker and a fuse, I do believe. And I'm going to monitor things carefully. Uh, one reason I'm a little more confident than I might be with older sets is, well, this set is from around 1960. So much newer than the most of the sets I work on that are from the 40s. And also, I have a couple other predictors that are pretty much functional on their original parts. So as bad a wrap as these sets have, I've uh, had some pretty good luck with them. So let's see if that holds. One kind of nice thing about working on these sets when they're together is that you can have full access to the back and swivel the screen and see what's going on with that. So kill this one light so you can see the screen better so again uh, PR57 I've got it dialed into about 117 volts I've got it to monitor the current on the 1.5 amp range got uh, my line cord hooked up here you still have a push on push off power switch that uh, are known to be kind of flaky so I do, and I have no way of knowing whether it's on or off. So I'm going to rely on the power switch on this. 
And without further ado, let's see. So if the sun is turned on and uh, power is getting through to it, we'll see a, a swing on the current when I turn this on. And we got nothing. So let's try pushing this. And this is a flip. Uh, definitely drew some current and went back down. That's good. So I don't have the dead short. And tubes are lighting up. If I see this current swing up, I'll kill the power because that means we've got a problem. It should go up a little bit as the tubes warm up and start drawing power, but it shouldn't peg over. And of course, look for any signs of smoke or sparking or arcs or anything. And how about that? We got a raster. And current is holding at about 1.1 amps. Crack a lot of the speaker. Excellent. Adjusting the vertical hold. Now, obviously, if everything was working right, it would fill the screen. But vertical problems are the most common thing you're going to find in a 50s TV or pretty much any old tube based TV. It could be the vertical output tube. The ver uh, very often, the electrolytic on the cathode bypass, uh, the vertical output tube gets leaky or, or uh, yeah, other associated circuitry. So that is pretty cool. Um, adjusting the brightness control. Definitely responsive. Adjusting the vertical hold again. And there's a horizontal hold. So I think we still have a channel 6 broadcasting around here. Let's hook up a little cheesy antenna. Clipping on some wires here and see. Although, even if I'm not tuning in anything, I would should get some static and some snow, and I'm not. So I'm not sure this tuner is really doing much of anything. Sound up all the way. Hey, look at that light bulb on the channel indicator is even working. <laughs> Well, we do get some sound coming through for sure when I change the channels, but no snow, no static. Oh, I spoke too soon. Damn. Well, don't want the copyright police to get me, so I'll turn that and see if we can get a lock. Huh. Wow. Looks pretty terrible, but man, for uh, our first power-up, that is pretty, pretty awesome. And I'm down in the basement with just uh, some random wires for an antenna. Right, turn the sign up briefly, just so we can... That's not very good sound, is it? Alright, I'm gonna kill that. So, hey, how about that? It looks like the vertical's getting better too, so the caps are probably forming up. And the current is holding pretty steady, so I'm going to let this run a little while while keeping an eye on things. Well, unfortunately, as I was making some adjustments to the width and height, started a little curl of smoke, and I lost my picture. So, you know, that's why <laughs> you really got to restore these sets if you expect them to function. But, encouraging, the smoke came from down around in here. I suspect a resistor burned up, 
or maybe one of these old bumblebee caps was leaky enough that it conducted enough that it kind of burnt up. But uh, uh, because I caught it in time, shut everything down, I don't think anything major could have gotten damaged. But hey, it's an example of why you don't do this, why you don't just plug stuff up and let it run, leave the room or something, because I could have very easily damaged something by doing this, uh, something that would be difficult and expensive to replace. But I know it's tempting. It's tempting to just plug things in and keep your fingers crossed. But hey, at least another picture tube is good and the set is rather functional. It'll be interesting now to troubleshoot and see what actually burned out. There's so much dust and dirt down there. Uh, I can't really see what's going on. So I'm afraid that's going to be it for now. I hope you enjoyed this brief look and first power-up of a Filco Predicta debutante from about 1960.